This question is about a glucose oxygen fuel cell. Most specifications don't have this cell as a specific part of the course that you need to know, so that means that they're going to give you enough information in the question to piece it together with what you do need to know to work out what the answers are going to be. And the most common fuel cell that you are expected to know about is the hydrogen fuel cell. And we can actually draw a diagram for this that is going to be really similar to the hydrogen fuel cell in a moment. And so the information that we're given is that when the cell operates, the glucose molecules react with water at the negative electrode to form carbon dioxide and hydrogen ions. Oxygen reacts with hydrogen ions to form water at the positive electrode. Deduce the half equation for the reaction at the negative electrode. Well, we've already been told what the reactants are, glucose and water, and we've been told that carbon dioxide and hydrogen ions get produced. And so this means that we need to put the electrons on one side of the equation. We are told that this is the negative electrode. Now you need to remember that electrons are lost at the negative electrode and that means that there are going to be electrons on the right hand side. And in terms of electrode potential, electrons are lost because the redox equilibria goes backwards, it goes in the oxidation direction. And so in terms of balancing this, there's two different ways you could do it. You could look at oxidation states or you could just simply look at atoms. I think that is the easier way to do this. So we've got six carbon in glucose, so that means we're going to need six CO2. There are six oxygen atoms in glucose and one in water, and this is being balanced with six lots of O2 from the six CO2. So that means we've got 12 oxygen on the right hand side. So that means to balance this, we need six water molecules on the left because we've got six plus one times six, which gets us 12 on both sides. And then that means that we've got 12 hydrogen in glucose. Six times two is another 12 hydrogen from water. And so that means we've got 24 hydrogen on the left hand side. And that means we need to have 24 hydrogen ions on the right hand side. And this then is nearly finished, we just need to balance the electrons. The left hand side currently has no charge, the right hand side has currently got plus 24 as a charge. And then we've got the one electron which is balancing one of that plus 24. And so that means that we need to have 24 electrons to balance this out because that gives us zero charge overall. And we need to do all of that for one mark. The Positive electrode is much easier. We're told that oxygen is reacting with hydrogen ions to form water at the positive electrode. And so that means that we already know most of our half equation. We need to work out what is going to be happening in terms of electrons. We can put them in in advance like we did with the negative electrode, but let's not this time and let's look at the other way that you can do that. So you've got two oxygen in O2 and only one in H2O. So we put a 2 in front of the H2O in our products. That then gives us 4 hydrogen on the right hand side and 1 hydrogen on the left. So we need 4 hydrogen ions on the left hand side. And then this tells us that since the right hand side has got no charge overall, the left hand side needs to have no charge overall. It is currently plus 4, so that means that we need to add 4 electrons on the left hand side to give both sides the same charge. This makes sense of course because if the negative electrode is losing electrons and they're on the right hand side, the positive electrode must be gaining electrons and they'll be on the left hand side. Part C says give the overall reaction that occurs in the glucose oxygen fuel cell. So to do this, we need to look for a common multiple of electrons. We've got 24 in the first equation and four in the second. And so that means we need to multiply the second half equation by six and then add it to the first one. When we do that, we get an equation that looks like this at the bottom. And you can see that we've got 24 electrons on both sides. That allows us to eliminate them because you don't include anything that is unchanged from the beginning of the reaction. This applies in the exact same way to the 24 hydrogen that are in the reactants and the products as hydrogen ions. We need to eliminate them from both sides. 
and we also need to spot that there are six water molecules on the left hand side and 12 water molecules on the right. That is an overall change of just six on the right hand side. So we need to get rid of the six from the left hand side and change the 12 on the right down to six. And so this gives us an overall equation of glucose, C6H12O6, plus 6O2 turns into 6CO2 and 6H2O. And so if you look at the diagram that I'm just sketching at the bottom, you can see that we're, we've got a fuel cell that looks really similar to the hydrogen fuel cell, where you've got the two chemicals that come in from opposite sides of the cell itself. One of them is oxygen, just like the hydrogen fuel cell, but the other on the left hand side is a mixture of glucose and water that gets pumped in. And so on the left hand side, we've got the negative electrode where the re reaction from part A occurs. That produces carbon dioxide that will go out of the bottom and that produces hydrogen, which will drift from the left hand side, the left electrode to the right electrode. And then it also produces electrons that will move through a wire, either through a motor or something like that, whatever it is powering. And then it will end up at the right hand side electrode where it will be part of the reaction in section B. And so the oxygen that gets pumped in from the right hand side will react with those hydrogen that have moved through the electrolyte in the middle and the electrons that have moved through the wire and we'll get the reduction half equation as in part B. And so overall, the reaction that is taking place in that fuel cell is the answer to part C. In D, we are told that the negative electrode is made of carbon and the positive electrode is made of platinum. And that's important because we need to have some kind of electrical conductor that can allow those electrons to be taken away or added. And that would be towards the top of the fuel cell where the electrons are moving into the wire. And so we've then been asked to give the conventional representation for the glucose oxygen fuel cell. So the rules for this is that the negative electrode needs to be on the left hand side. That's the thing with the smaller electrode potential and therefore the positive thing goes on the right hand side. We draw a double line in the middle to represent the salt bridge, the separation between those two electrodes. And then the reduced form of the negative electrode goes on the outside of the left and the reduced form goes on the outside on the right. The reduced form is the lowest oxidation state and the oxidized form is the highest oxidation state. And if we've drawn our cell diagram correctly, the thing on the left hand side of each half turns into the thing on the right hand side of each half. And so that means that we need to have glucose on the left of the left hand electrode along with hydrogen ions and carbon dioxide on the right hand side of that electrode. Now we need to separate these chemicals by a phase boundary where appropriate. Glucose and the hydrogen ions are likely to both be solutions, so that is a comma, whereas carbon dioxide is a gas, so that needs to be a solid line. Then we need to acknowledge the carbon electrode, the inert carbon electrode, and that will be a solid and therefore a solid line will separate it from the glucose. We don't need to include the water because the oxygen from the water has not changed oxidation state. Then the other side of the salt bridge, we need to have the oxygen gas and then we have the hydrogen ions that is also part of the reactants. That will be aqueous, so separate those two with a solid line. And then a comma to separate the hydrogen ions and the water. And in fact, you could have a comma or a solid line in that position. They're not too fussy about water next to aqueous ions, whether that's a solid line or a comma. What is absolutely vital is that we have the platinum on the outside of this equation, the inner platinum electrode, and that will be a solid and we'll need a solid line to separate it from the water. Usually questions like this say to ignore the state symbols that have been written by the candidate, but that doesn't mean that you need to ignore them because they're really important when deciding whether you're using a solid line or a comma. And then the final part of this question says, state what must be done to maintain the EMF of this fuel cell when it is in use. Well, when it's in use, the reactants are going to get used up. 
And so what you will need to do is continuously add new reactants, so new glucose and new oxygen, in order to keep a concentration of the reactants that is constant. So you can say either of those two things, add more reactants continuously or keep the reactant concentration a constant value. Okay, that's the end of this question. I hope it was useful. I'll see you again soon.